Look, I know that when you look at mountains, there's just so much detail, so many shadows and crags and, and cracks and textures. And like, how could you, how could you even possibly begin to capture all of that with precision and accuracy? And I have to tell you a secret. You don't have to. Hello, my friend. My name is Colby Bloom, and this is day six of Painting the Wilderness Color. We've officially gotten halfway through the challenge, and I am super excited about today's tutorial because it is going to stretch you. <laughs> it is going to challenge you to push through a lot of your own insecurities as we paint a really colorful red rock desert scene. Okay, here we go. Rainbow Desert. So here's the thing, and I already talked about this in the intro, but uh, when you paint mountains, you're gonna get all scared. You're gonna get all like, oh, but I can't possibly, and especially as soon as you start painting, you're gonna be like, this is just, this is not working. And before we even get to that point, I'm telling you, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> We're gonna be fine. Even if you decide you want to start over, it's gonna be fine. But if you don't, it's still gonna be fine. And I'm gonna talk more about that. So the first thing we're gonna start with is this sketch. So we're sketching the mountain. And basically what I'm doing is I'm making just a bunch of like, you know, curves, just a bunch of random curves and some curves going into the mountain because we're kind of painting some overlapping rocks. There might be some cracks in this red rock mountain. Okay, and then that little line across the bottom is where the desert foliage is going to go. Where the lines are does not really matter uh, because you, like basically you get to decide, but we're just kind of putting in some cracks, some giving us a guideline for where we might want to paint some more dark shadowy spots, all right? So another thing that's important to note is that there are two sections of this rock. The top third of that rock is gonna be a lot, like a darker orange, and then the bottom two thirds of that rock is gonna be a lot lighter. Just remember that. Because we're not painting the mountain yet, we're painting the sky. But uh, I just want you to remember, the bottom two thirds of the mountain light, the top, two, the top third of the mountain is gonna be a little more, a little darker, a little more colorful. So after the sketch, the next thing is we're going to get the sky wet, but only the sky, right? So we're using the edge of the mountain as like a boundary. So the mountain itself is gonna stay wet. That's because we don't want blue anywhere near our mountain. So I'm gonna use tallow turquoise here. If you find that whatever turquoise you're using is a little bit too green, um, you can add a little blue to it, but honestly, it's okay. A blue green is actually the color that we want here. Um, so I'm using tallow turquoise at the top because my sky is already wet, right? So I'm starting at the top with really pigmented water, and then I'm slowly going back and forth across the sky in even horizontal strokes to bring the color all the way down. And then as soon as we get to like, you know, like halfway through that sky, I'm rinsing off my brush and I am bringing the color down just with water and sometimes even rinsing off my brush and starting from the bottom and painting upward. That is so we can create this gradient, right? Um, so the way to create a gradient, once again, you start pigmented at the top, you slowly go down, you wash off your brush so you're only using water to bring down this really light pigment, and then sometimes blending from the bottom up with a clean brush to uh, keep blending together. And I did like three or four layers of that. So then we're starting on this rock right? And I'm just using Scarlet Lake, maybe a little bit of gold ochre um, to get this really, really light value, like tan color. So it's Scarlet Lake, some gold ochre and tons of water, like so much water. So I'm just barely tinting, really just barely tinting this mountain, this kind of tan orangey color, right? And see, as soon as it dries, as soon as I use my dryer, it's almost like the color has gone away and that's okay. Remember, we want the bottom of that mountain, and I'm not painting the whole thing, right? I'm leaving the bottom part um, where the foliage is going to be a little bit clearer of paint. We want the bottom two thirds of that mountain to be really light and the top third to be darker. So I painted the, the, that first layer, 
let it dry, and then I got the mountain wet again, and I'm using Scarlet Lake here, like a like still pretty watery Scarlet Lake to paint another layer while it's wet of uh you know tinting that top third of the mountain uh that orange color. Then I let it dry. So we're two layers in. This is layer three. Layer three, I'm starting to do dry brush texture, okay? So this is Scarlet Lake. I'm using my size two, my uh, round number two paintbrush. And you see how I'm just barely scraping my paintbrush against the paper. And it looks like some really choppy texture is coming through. So uh, this is dry brush texture. If you find that you're not getting the choppy texture, it's because you have too much water. And so I'm like, getting rid of some of the excess paint on my tape or on my palette um, before I start painting on the paper. And I'm just doing kind of like horizontal strokes. I'm gonna do the same thing with a really light value gold ochre. So this is gold ochre across some of the bottom part of the rock and also on the top. So we're building, we're, we're building slow layers of mountain here. There's more gold ochre with slightly more pigmented. Um, and then I'm gonna use, this is, this is um, Schminky Super Granulating Urban Red. So it's kind of like a brownish red color that's granulating. And I'm gonna use a little bit of that color to add some texture here. And then along some of the cracks, I'm gonna like just paint along where I've created these guidelines for these cracks, right? And it doesn't matter where they are. You don't, you don't have to put them where mine are. You just were trying to, we added some kind of curves that kind of went down or across as guidelines for little cracks. And I'm gonna put some dry brush texture on top of those guidelines. I'm not doing very, very dark right now. So it's, so I'm using this red, um, this urban red super granulating color. If you don't have that color, it's okay. You can use Scarlet Lake mixed with a little bit of indigo or Scarlet Lake mixed with a little brown, like, or just a brown color. That's really what we're going for. And then I'm adding some dry brush texture. So really the grand scheme of this is, what I'm doing is starting really light and then slowly building up darker colors, right? And along those cracks, sometimes I put dry brush texture and then I washed off my brush and I kind of buffed it out so that it blended into the mountain a little bit better. Now, when you're putting on dry brush texture, it's not going to blend all the way because it's not wet on wet, right? It's going to blend a little bit and that's all that we need. We don't need it to blend perfectly. So then I took a little bit, just a tiny bit of indigo and added it to um, that urban red color. And I made my cracks just a little bit darker. Here's the thing. Here's where I want to warn you when you're putting this color on, like when you're darkening up your cracks. If you make them too dark from the outset, they're going to look kind of strange. They're going to look kind of wonky. And they do a little bit now, like we're gonna add more, more detail to it, but just go lighter than you think you're going to need to right away. So I've darkened up the cracks and now I'm just adding texture to this mountain. Uh, I'm, this is still dry brush. This is gonna be dry brush for basically from here on out. I'm adding texture with like some horizontal lines all the way across. Um, I'm using some Quinn gold to add some more bright yellows to this mountain. So, you know, I'm going very fast. Um, I, I sped this up to go very fast, but that's because I'm basically doing the same thing over and over and over again, just with different colors. I'm adding mostly horizontal lines, occasionally adding some vertical lines, some vertical zigzags, but this is just like a lot of small detail line work, slowly adding texture a little bit at a time. So, uh, now I'm gonna focus on where these cracks are because the cracks are really the hardest part uh, when you're trying to build build shadows, okay? So we have where the cracks are and then on top of where these like kind of darkened lines, I'm going to put some dry brush texture only on one side, all right? Only on one side. So some of the cracks I decided to put on like, if, like if they're a vertical crack, on the right side. If they're if they're more of a horizontal crack, I'm gonna do I'm gonna pick either the bottom or I'm gonna pick the top. And that's because I'm trying to build in a shadow, right? The crack is there because there's some kind of shadow. And so it looks like a shadow better when you only choose one side to darken up. Now I'm taking some of that darker, like red brown color, and I'm adding more lines across the top of the mountain, across that top third of the mountain. And um, just adding so many lines, adding lots of dry brush texture. 
This is where I got tripped up. I stopped uh, before I had added too many lines for my first one, and I'm gonna go back and show it to you. And I thought I was doing it wrong. I thought that I had it wrong and it just wasn't looking right because I wasn't painting enough, I, I because I didn't know what I was doing. But actually what was happening is I hadn't, I just hadn't drawn enough details yet. So keep adding lines. When in doubt, keep adding really thin lines. Keep adding dry brush texture. Those cracks continue to look weird. And so I added more dry brush texture on top of them, slightly darker to make it, to make the shadows really pop, um, but not too much. You know, if you're adding really dark paint, a little bit can go a long way, especially for these shadows. I almost think that I made them a little too dark, but I think that it still looks okay. So like, this is me coaching you through. I know I'm going fast. I know you're like, you're going too fast, but it's because I'm making random marks, okay? I'm making random marks. I'm making some blobs. I'm making lots of lines going horizontal across all the sections. And I'm intentionally leaving that bottom two thirds. The base color is that light beige, right? That we did the very first. And I'm also intentionally adding contrast. So not all of the lines are horizontal. They are really wonky lines. Some of them are going down vertically sideways. Some of them are going horizontal, but I probably spent at least 45 minutes just adding lines. So that's the key to mountain painting, really. It's being slow and meditative and just trusting in that it doesn't matter if you know where the details are supposed to go. You just need to keep adding lines. That's all I'm going to say about this mountain. So now I'm moving on to the bottom part, which is the fun part, because it's a lot looser. This is fun. We're adding really loose shaped foliage. Okay. So first um, I mixed a I mixed up just a bunch of greens really. And I'm putting in, every time I add a new color, I make the shape slightly different. So sometimes I did little circular blobs. Sometimes I did like fatter blobs. Sometimes I did more spindly, like aloe looking, looking leaves, right? But I'm not trying to paint very specific foliage here. I'm just mixing up my marks. I'm having fun with my marks, painting random bunches of different desert greens. And I ranged from having dark green to sage green. And then I added a few little specks of Scarlet Lake to just kind of really brighten up the greens to have that red orange right up against the greens. And then I took some gray color and I added some shadows. And that's, that's basically all I did. So painting the greenery part um, probably only took me like 10 minutes because I was just painting random marks, uh, leaving some white space in between, painting some shadows off to the side of some of those green things. The majority of this project, which took me quite a while to paint, over an hour, the majority of this project was painting the little lines on the mountain. And like I told you before, this is the second draft of this mountain, the second draft. So it's okay for you to push through a messy first draft. I think if I would have pushed through my messy first draft, I probably would have liked it a little bit better. It's also okay to stop and to start again. It's okay to stop partway through or most of the way through and say, I just, I just think that I could do that better and then trying it a different time. This is my first one. All right, here's my second one. Here's my first one. The biggest difference is with my first one, my lines weren't as thin, so the cracks that went across the mountain weren't as thin. I also did not leave the what the lighter part of the mountain light enough. So I had to go over it with white gouache after and make it light after, which it just didn't look quite as well. So the second version doesn't look like drastically different, right? The second version just you know, it doesn't look quite as detailed, but the same principles applied where I did really thin details and I mixed up the direction of the lines, right? The thin lines that I was painting across the mountain where a lot of them were horizontal, some of them were zigzag all the way down or vertical. Like I was just building up slow texture, starting light, very, very light, and then slowly building up dark. And where I wanted a shadow, knowing that I wanted it to be blurry. I want there to be a lot of dry brush texture there so that it's not just like a stark line. It looks like it's, you know, like just a blurry shadow coming out from the rock. So things I loved and learned, I loved the details and I loved the details because they were wonky. 
Um, I loved all the different textures. I love painting mountains because I think it's so much fun to try out random textures and see how they can come together. I also love the pops of color with the red against the green. Things I learned, start vibrant maybe this time and add more mute, uh, muted details. Like the, my very first draft, I had my Scarlet Lake be a little bit more muddy and I didn't like that. So my Scarlet Lake in the second draft is pretty much pure Scarlet Lake and I loved that. Keep going through the mess, and sometimes the details add up. It's also okay to start again. So I hope that you really enjoyed this tutorial, uh, and I will see you again next time.